What's going on engineers? So recently I did a project where I installed a motorized gate at the front of my driveway to kind of keep my dog in my property. So in typical engineer man style, rather than purchase their overpriced accessories for their gate opener, I instead just made them all myself. So in this video I'm going to show you how I used a long range wireless station, a Raspberry Pi, a USB relay, and a custom made app to open my gate remotely. So I'll start by showing you the final product. So here's the gate and we're going to work backwards in the technology chain that made all this work. Although we're not going to be focusing on the construction aspect of this gate, a quick hat tip to my father who helped me do the construction piece of it. In this video we're primarily focused on the technology and the electronic pieces. So the first thing we're interested in here is this black arm and I picked this particular arm because I knew it had a logic board inside that was going to let me do some things that were kind of generic such as you know trigger it to open, trigger it to close, set the different force, and a couple other options. So that's why I picked that particular one. So once you open up the arm you find a circuit board that looks like this and though there's a lot of things on here the thing that we're primarily interested in is this area that says control inputs. Essentially how this works is the first two pins here are common pins which means you're going to have to connect some wire to that and then all the rest of the ones do something different to the actual motor. So the one we need to use is the one that actually opens and closes the gate and that's going to be this one here labeled cycle. So each time the cycle is shorted with one of the common pins it causes the gate to either open, close, or stop. And it works a lot like your garage door. If it's currently closing and you short it it'll stop the gate. If it's currently closed it'll start opening and so on. So now that I knew which two pins I needed to short I started by attaching two blue wires to each of those pins and I ran it up into this gray box. Inside this gray box contains the Raspberry Pi, the relay, a switch, and a couple other things. But the important thing here is this relay and you can see there's two blue wires coming into this relay and they're attached to the ones that are marked as normally open. For those that know how to relay works you have three pins. The center one is going to be a common, the left one in my case is going to be a normally open meaning it's not shorted in the default position and then the right side is going to be a normally closed, meaning it is shorted in the default position. When the relay is triggered, the normally open becomes closed, and the normally closed becomes open, so they just become reversed. Triggering the relay through code is extremely easy. As soon as you hook up the relay into the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi sees it as a standard UART device and mounts it at slash dev slash TTY USB 0. And all that's necessary to activate and deactivate the relay is to simply send four specific bytes to it to activate it and four specific bytes to it to deactivate it. So all my code here does is trigger the relay, wait a half a second, and then deactivate the relay. Not that it's super important because any relay that you buy might be different, but the first two bytes were always the same. And then the third byte was the actual action to take, uh, one in this case to trigger, and then zero to not trigger. And then the final byte is a checksum, which is just the sum of all the other bytes. And we're doing nothing more than just writing raw bytes to that device. So I stored this code in a file called cycle.sh, which means I now have an interface to the gate to open and close it. I can log into the Raspberry Pi, I can run cycle.sh and it'll open it, and then I can run it again and it'll close it. So next thing I have to do is get connectivity to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is about 300 feet away from my house, which means it's outside of the range of Wi-Fi. To solve the connectivity issue, I'm using a pair of Ubiquiti Nano stations, which have about a three mile range, which of course is more than enough to cover the 300 feet it has to go. The one that's actually at the gate is operating in station mode, and then the one that's near my house is operating in access point mode. These are rated for outdoor applications, and because of its color and its coating, it absorbs very little sunlight, meaning even in direct sunlight, it doesn't get all that hot. So now that we have connectivity, next thing I did is I installed an Nginx onto the Raspberry Pi so I could expose an endpoint that would actually trigger the cycle.sh to open and close the gate. So I installed that, I created an endpoint on slash cycle, and I used the Lua module for Nginx to execute the slash home slash gate slash cycle.sh file. So now there's two ways to trigger the gate. I can log in with SSH to the Raspberry Pi and run cycle.sh directly, or I can call HTTP colon slash slash Raspberry Pi IP slash cycle. So what I've created now is an HTTP interface into triggering this gate. This next part is probably unnecessary for most people, but it is necessary because of the way my network is configured in that I already have web services that are listening on my public IP. So what I've done here is in my nginx config on my server that's exposed to the internet, I've created this new endpoint which is slash cycle and then this random string of characters. 
Now this is obviously not that secure because it it's not it doesn't really need to be the the gate's not to keep criminals out it's to keep my dog in and if somebody really wants to get through the gate they can simply just pull the pin on the gate and in they go. So one of the design goals here was not necessarily some some crazy level of authentication and security. But anyways, this specific endpoint is exposed to the internet. That's the important thing. And all it does is proxy the request through to the Raspberry Pi slash cycle, which then triggers the gate. So the last piece of this is my super complex app I made, which looks like this. And by super complex, I mean it literally has one button that just says open gate. I like to think that this is fantastic user experience, though, because I put the button at the bottom. That way, when you open the app, you can just hit it with your thumb instead of having to, like, reach up and hit something at the top. So once that open gate button is pressed, now it calls a piece of code in the Android app, this function called open. And all this does is make an HTTP request to HTTPS colon slash slash and then my public IP for my home slash and then cycle and the unique string of characters. The thing that we saw earlier. And when you do that, it should open the gate. So let's recap what happens from the time you click open gate to the time the gate opens. When you click open gate, the app makes an HTTP request to my home server. My home server will then take that request and proxy it through to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi will take that request and execute that cycle.sh file. And that cycle.sh file will trigger the relay, which will cause the gate to open. A future feature I intend on doing, and I'll cover it in a separate video, some of you may have noticed that there's a camera at the gate as well. And the reason I put that there is two reasons. One is for, of course, security. I can log who's coming in and out of my property. And then the second thing is I can actually look at the car and I can determine if it's an authorized car and just open the gate automatically. But that's not made yet, so more on that in a separate video. And that's it. That's my do-it-yourself Raspberry Pi powered remote gate opener. And it's not all that expensive to do. Raspberry Pi is 35 bucks. The relay was about 8 on eBay. And then the long-range wireless station, I think, was about 75 But that could be optional if your home is close enough to your gate to where you don't actually need it. So you could probably get this done for under 50 bucks, you know, versus the hundreds of dollars that you would have paid for the for the vendor's version of all this. I had a really good time doing this project. I, I hope everybody liked it as well. Leave me a comment below if you had any questions about the, the project in general or anything else. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.